Hi, welcome to Take a Lap, a podcast featuring everything track and field. I'm your host, Susan Wong. What's up, everybody? I want to talk about the controversy surrounding Nike's Vaporfly shoe. So if you know anything about that's going on in the track world, you know what I'm talking about. The shoe that is stirring up controversy left and right. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, back in 2016, when Nike first introduced the Vaporfly 4%, it's called 4% because it's supposed to increase your efficiency, by, your energy efficiency, your performance efficiency, I guess, by 4%. Nike designed it with this um, polymer rubber foam material called PVAX. Um, Nike calls it ZoomX. It's this technology that makes the runner basically feel like they're running barefoot. It helps the runner spring spring back as they're running. Um, so it, it, it returns a percentage of the energy that the runner is putting into the shoe back into the running. I don't know if that really makes sense to anyone, but in simpler terms, the runner is using the same amount of effort that they would be running in any other shoe, but they're feeling less tired, and that would equal faster times. So the whole controversy behind this is, like, the shoe... Oh, I also forgot. It's not just the foam. There's also this carbon fiber plate, which obviously... I I mean, I'm assuming I'm not an expert or anything, but I'm assuming that carbon fiber plate is important to... Uh, making the, the the runners a lot faster and these times a lot faster. The controversy behind it, though, is that people think that it's technological doping, kind of like it's cheating. Like, these shoes are giving athletes an unfair advantage over some other athletes and the other competitors, which I think is a valid point because what happens to those other elite athletes that are signed with brands that, that aren't Nike and they're wearing other shoes that aren't Nike shoes? And why is that even important? Well, because in the last year, in 2018 and in 2019, majority of the, sh- the winning Marathon runners, so the ones that were in the podium, were wearing Nike Vaporflies. So in 2019, actually 31 out of the 36 um, men and women were wearing Vaporflies that were on the podium. So either one, first, second, or third place. And this is at the Boston Marathon, Tokyo Marathon, Berlin, Chicago, New York. These are the biggest marathons in the, in the world. You might be like, well, they're fast anyway, so it doesn't really matter what shoe they're wearing. These athletes are breaking the barrier, breaking the time down. It started with Eliud Kipchoge back in 2017 when Nike first attempted the breaking two where um, they had Eliud Kipchoge wear the, one of the very early prototype iterations of the Vaporflies and he was in a course where there were like pacemakers, there were, uh, it was a flat course, a racetrack in Italy where everything was meticulously like engineered, I want to say, like st- simulated so that he would be able to run a marathon in under two hours. People used to think that is impossible. He ended up not breaking it. He ran a two hour and 25 second marathon, which is still very, very impressive. Barely missed the mark. Fast forward all the way to October of 2019. This time he broke two hours. Kipchoge actually ran it in 159.40 while wearing a prototype pair of the Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent. Wow, try saying that 10 times fast. And this is with the help of um, 41 pacers, and those pacers are some of the best distance runners in the world. I mean, like, to put in a respect of how fast 159.40 is, a marathon is 26.2 miles. Imagine running that much, first of all. I mean, I've only ever ran, like, probably max, like, 8 miles at once. And he's running it at a really, really fast pace. How fast? A 4 minute 33 per mile pace. He ran each mile at a consistent 4.33 pace. That is crazy. These shoes obviously sparked so much controversy. That's why the World Athletics, a.k.a. IAAF, decided, all right, we got to step in. We got to make some new regulations. So starting April 30th, shoes that, that are used for competition must be available for the public, so either online or on retail, four months before it is used in competition. So meaning prototype shoes cannot be used. Um, another big thing is the sole cannot be thicker than 40 millimeters. And Nike's Vaporflies, they were barely 40 millimeters, so they passed the test. Uh, the next thing is that the shoe cannot contain more than one plate or blade. So like the carbon fiber fiber plate that I'm talking about it cannot have more than one of those in the shoe however you can have multiple pieces as long as it doesn't like stack up or like parallel overlap each other and these are just a few of the new regulations the IAF has put it together or what the things have put together to ensure that the sport is fair and um it is an Olympic year so that is kind of a big deal but the whole corona thing coronavirus thing it's already had an impact um in Recently, just literally like last week, February 29th, the Tokyo Marathon that was supposed to have around 40,000 runners, but the event organizers decided at like we have to cut it down to only the elite athletes, the only the elite runners. So they only had 200 people competing. And I mean, there's always there's been concerns that you know, it might even get canceled or you might get moved back, scaled down. I mean, it won't be the first time. 
uh, actually. Fun fact, uh, not fun, but like, you know, the Olympics were canceled in 1916, 1940, and 1944, but all those three times were due to war. We're not at war right now. Okay, I'm going on a tangent. Um, I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to wait for the next episode. Thank you for listening to Take a Laugh. Follow me on Twitter at Susan S. Wong underscore and on Instagram at Susan S. Wong.